Hey guys, uh, so my name is Anil Patney and I'm here at CES uh, 2020 in Las Vegas and it's a huge convention and there's all kinds of electronics here and here I'm currently promoting my campaign. The campaign is to build an incubator in Austin, Texas and it's called Tiny Hacker House and it's a live work community event space where I invite hackers and makers to build uh, innovation projects around sustainability and sustainable living and one of our projects is in the last three years we've been building these dome structures and experimenting with different materials different structures and uh, this is some examples of our manufacturing process where we have a, C a 3D model that goes to our CNC machine it cuts out hexagons and pentagons out of aluminum composite material and then turns it into a kit that two people can build in three hours and this is a scalable structure and it can be a variation of sizes from uh, a kid's dome to a pet's dome to an adult dome and their modular spaces um, and uh, the largest is 300 square feet in size and our goal is to build a dome city and uh, these are just some of our explorations and this is a 360 video I've made about one of our other dome art installation projects um, and you'll see how this uh, this approach is um, going to change uh, the structure of the dome and making it interactive. So this is inside the dome? Yeah, this is inside the dome. It looks psychedelic or it looks cool. Yeah, these are all LED lights and they basically uh, do sequences and we can program it to interact with people and sounds in its area. Um, and create interactive experiences in there. He looks awesome. Yeah, thanks. Um, and then, yeah. So it's nice is, for a little party, right? The yeah, dome. yeah, it could be used for parties. It could be good for like corporate events. It How big like, is it? This one's about uh, 25 feet tall. So um, it's pretty large. You uh, have? Can you show how it looks from outside? Um, yeah. Uh, let me see if I have a shot of that. Um, actually, I don't have an outside picture of it. This all inside. Oh, not on that video, right? Yeah. Uh, not Do you have another video. image or something? Uh, let me see. Yeah. Uh, I might have a still. Let me see. Let's see if oh. you can load that up. I have this actually. This is yeah. our dome. This is the dome that we're. Uh, I took to Burning Man this year, and. Whoa. Um, this is uh, a 3D model. There's this, uh, all the panels, and we built this in three hours. Two of us and it, we want to build a dome city. So these domes can be used, they're modular spaces. They can be used for um, housing, temporary shelter, uh, workspaces, uh, off-grid living. Um, they could, they'll have showers, restrooms, everything integrated in there. At this event, I was doing tea tasting. So people that were at the festival came in, sat down, enjoyed some samples of tea by Rishi Tea, um, and um, got to have a conversation and meet each other. And Rishi is what? What tea? Uh, Rishi Tea. Um, they make um, their own tea, uh, different grains of tea, uh, tea leaves even. Um, but they're here in the U.S. and um, they make this really amazing chai tea, masala chai tea, which is really good. Um, so we did tea tasting in there. But another uh, scenario is these domes could be used for greenhouses too. And so we want to grow food and vegetables in this space where in the future we'll have a vertical garden that uh, people can put in their backyard and then they can grow their own produce and then cook and clean with health, access to healthy food all year round. So, um, so it's like, like hard material, it's not like a tent. Correct, yeah. This is aluminum composite, so it's actually really strong. You could probably stand on the top of this structure and it wouldn't collapse. It's actually quite heavy. Weather resistant? It is weather resistant. We tested out here in the middle of the desert at 110 degrees temperatures and it didn't have any challenges. It handled the dust, it handled the dirt and all of the pieces have like these little angles on the end of them where it overlaps so that if it rained uh, water would drip off the edge as opposed to um, you know leaking inside the cracks and so there's no open lines where traditional geodesic domes ha that they have where uh, water can leak inside this prevents that from happening and the cool thing is our manufacturing process we can custom customize any part of these panels so if you wanted to add a door you wanted to add a different window 
we could integrate that into our 3D model and it would cut these pieces out with those changes in it and you could integrate that um, product or thing into this structure itself. How was the reception at the Burning Man? At Burning Man, people loved it. And it's funny because um, during the event, people, tore, other people like tore down the signs and so it's really hard to navigate through the um, event and from one camp to another. And we found that this illuminated uh, Wonder Dome created, a, a, acted as a landmark that people could say, uh, understand like, okay, I'm, it's by that dome structure that's lit up and uh, we're close to that, you know, and so meet us there. Or it was a meeting point uh, uh, and uh, it helped people navigate around there. So camps. you're the only structure that didn't collapse in the whole Burning yes, Man yes. at the end. We did not collapse and um, the first challenge that we faced is uh, on day one I put all my stuff inside of it and dust blew through the windows and the next morning dust, everything was covered in dust and uh, I guess one of our revisions is we're going to actually fill these uh, window spaces with actual windows and then that way we'll, we'll prevent the dust from coming into. Alright and it's, an, uh, it's good for the environment or no? Yeah, you I talk mean, about sustainable. Yeah, so it's low energy, and it, we can harness the power of like um, controlling uh, air, hot, warm, and cold air in within a space. So it's a lot more regulated. So you, instead of heating up the whole house, you only have to heat one room. Like that's uh, one of its big advantages. Is and the and the air autom because of its. Uh, circular like, like dome structure like the air flows round naturally too and circulates throughout the whole place um, so that's another it bounces off the walls and then comes back into the center cool so uh, did you have a good CS yeah I did I, I'm building partnerships with a lot of the companies here and uh, in the future I'll be integrating a lot of the technologies into this dome project um, but I'm also what kind of partnerships um, hardware, software, like um, air, like for cooling, for heating, and um, for lighting, and just basically controlling all of the, uh, you know, the toilets, the showers, the bathrooms, and everything facilities. Like, uh, we'll be hopefully like integrating a lot more of this into the future. But I'm running a campaign. It's called TinyHackerHouse.com and um, it's a crowdfunding campaign and people can donate to the project and it'll evolve and every time like uh, all the people that follow it will get to and contribute to it we'll get to see it as it transforms into this place as it travels around the world nice and you based where uh, in austin texas there's a lot of cool tech in austin yes there's a lot of semiconductor companies there's a lot of hardware some of my friends here are nxp are uh, showcasing and exhibiting here they have a lot of sensors and uh, they do a lot of monitoring and uh, all kinds of technologies do you use nxps all over the or is it nordic yeah or um, something else yeah so nxp is um has a whole suite of different sensors and um, some of my friends there i uh, met up with them and talked about my project and they're really excited about supporting it and uh, advancing it and uh, building a alternate community space for people that are homeless and uh, affordable houses need affordable housing and access to like uh, modular spaces and solving for gentrification too. There's a lot of uh, uh, homeless issues a little bit in Austin right? Uh, yeah. Maybe a lot of the homeless moved from San Francisco to Austin. Is yeah. that true or is it just something I hear in a podcast called that's, No Agenda? Yeah, no, that's true. It is. Um, housing is def housing was a lot cheaper than California and Austin, but since all the Californians are moving to Austin and acquiring real estate, like the prices have started to go up and um, it's not as affordable as it used to be and there's a lot less um, real estate available now but um, so how affordable is this tiny hacker house so if we, it's mass produced yeah let's dream about like big quantity yeah that's a good question i mean so we have like um i can show you uh one of my cards here that has uh the pricing information on it so the prices start at $999 and it goes all the way up to $27,000 and uh, these are the square footage so it tells you that if you had a four and a half uh, feet structure there's 16 uh, square feet that's Is that a only for a dog? Size. Yeah that's a dog house so you can have it for your pets you can have it for do um, your kids you can have it for you know adults your grandparents like 
um, and it goes all the way from 16 square feet to 650 square feet for the largest size we do right now. It's a castle. Yeah, a castle, a tiny dome castle. 